you'll see more of the similarities. Oh, my bad, I forgot to tell you to record. But basically, you can see the similarities and not focus on the specifics. And I don't think there will be that much controversy between the two or resentment. Well, I mean, the lawyers are just saying, I'm just doing my job, right? They hired me to do this. I have to make the case. Um, because of free and open society, the rule of law, you do. But, you know, people can say that. And basically, the legal system gets corrupted unless somebody decides, you know, that's OK. I'm not going to take this one. Um, but the other thing, it, it wasn't the Koran. It was a book about the Koran. And um, I think it's different to read the original book. It's like reading a book about a poet and reading a poem by the poet. <laughs> I, I think it punches a different button, um, or at least you can understand it's trying to punch a different button. So you can imagine, just imagine somebody who has memorized the Koran or a whole lot of it right? It is going to be their fallback. And so when you guys think of some Bible verse, which after I moved to Batesville, I really, all these Bible verses start popping out in my head because the students <laughs> keep referring to the Bible. And then I, oh, I remember that one or that one. But I mean, I always knew that people pick and choose. That's why I didn't really want to go into that professionally, because by the time I was in ninth grade, I knew people were using the Bible to justify the Vietnam War and to criticize the Vietnam War. So, so I gave up on that. But anyway, um, that would be, that's another issue, right? So the lawyers argue for things they don't even believe in just because they get paid. And then the book wasn't even the Koran. It was about the Koran. Why is that so threatening? Um, so I, I will get to you, Michael. I better just give some of these other people a chance. Lakesney, what about you? Uh, on this one, I agree with what Michael said because I had got this quote, which was, well, the chancellor of the school, Mr. Um, where is it? Mr. Mosul said he was getting uh, emails and everything about his idea, and some of them, some of them had said they were accusing him of doing "quote unquote" the work of Satan, and uh, that comes back to me. Michael said something about uh, like it had like the topic had something to do with uh, something to do with our country that we don't want to learn about it or something like that which comes like texas just released a, a long list of things like they were taking out their education system for the students to learn about and like for some that probably had little to do with our country and that caused that big of an uproar firsthand uh and so it's like i wasn't really surprised by it Okay. Um, Trey, what about you? Uh, do you mind repeating the question? I've been kind of typing. What about these two articles, right? Oh, the one that we just read and then the one that we just discussed? Well, the teaching of the of the book about the Quran. Mm. Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I read the article, but I just really wouldn't understand like okay. how to compare the two. Okay, or, you know, you are, I mean, you can compare my assignments or Lyon College liberal arts with that, with what's going on there. That's, that's the thing. Um, so what about Jason? Um, I'm kind of like Trey, uh, I think a lot of people covered kind okay. of what I was gonna talk about, but I think, um, one thing someone brought up earlier, I, I can't remember who it was, was talking about how like, um, oh, why do they hate us? Or, or, and then the other side is like, why do they hate us? 
I think one of the big things for the U.S. is well, the way I see it is that like we're always jumping to help um, others, but maybe sometimes we don't need to be helping. Uh, kind of like um, um, I I, I want to say the Vietnam War, but I'm not too well versed, so I, I don't want to speak on something that I don't know. But like we're always jumping to help, you know, to helping hand. Yet like uh, maybe that people don't want, you know, our help or, you know, we think it's um, uh, Christian. Like, well, I, I think it is Christian like to always help, but I guess it's sometimes maybe that uh, the other nations are, are not necessarily seeking for our help, but maybe some they want to handle themselves. And there was um, something that I, uh, it was from a movie. It was about, a um, I can't remember what the movie was. I think it was 12 Soldiers. It, it was a, about a conflict in the Middle East. And at the end of the movie, I think there's something that really uh, stuck out to me was um, at the end of the movie, as uh, the U.S. soldiers were leaving, uh, one of the locals was like, um, if you stay, they'll hate you for coming over here and, and basically like bringing destruction with them. But if you leave, they'll hate you too for um, not staying and helping. So it's kind of like, I think it's kind of like, um, like I said, back to like us always, well, the U.S. always lend, uh, giving a lending hand when maybe we shouldn't because sometimes um, the locals or maybe that a, a certain nation might not take kindly to it. Well, Afghanistan is more than Vietnam. We, I don't think we ever thought we were helping out Vietnam. It was just protecting, preventing the, you know, it was during the Cold War, right. preventing well, China from the whole idea was the whole area is going to go communist. Um, it's a domino. Yeah. So, um, so if you want, you know, to look at a movie, The Fog of War, it's about the guy who designed the whole Vietnam War strategy, the head of the Department of Defense, Robert McNamara. And he said it was all a big mistake. <laughs> so just for starters, and he gives, he has 10, 11 lessons to learn. Um, and one of them is make sure you know the people you're working with, <laughs> right? He says, we didn't know anything about the situation and we just went in there with our big theories. Uh, that's why theories are important. Um, so Michael, what did you wanna say? Sorry. Um, yeah, so I was just gonna, I was a little, I was trying to find the note that I'd made and I talked about what I wanted to, but, um, I was gonna say that to me it kind of illustrated like, um, like the in, like ignorance within like learning and understanding of others that like we're still seeing like today within ideas of like, like white privilege for example, um, I, I think that's like a pretty like obvious example, um, but where you just like, uh, you just have these people who like refuse, like refuse to even like contemplate the idea that they could be wrong or that the other, you know, that this other side could in fact be right, uh, if that makes any sense. And then I was going to ask if like, if you thought that, um, like if you thought that that has been like, historically, if you thought that that's kind of been in place, or if you feel like after 9-11, that was kind of that, that sort of uh, mindset was kind of um, promoted, or, uh, or what your thoughts on that was. What do you guys think? In Athens and Sparta, remember? Oh, those Spartans. Ah, they're barbarians. Oh, we gotta get them. They're gonna get us if they don't, if we don't, <laughs> right? We gotta take Melos because if we don't take you, then Sparta will take you or they think we're weak. And so, so you know, you don't wanna come, we're gonna just wipe you out in the name of saving democracy, right? And the Spartans, oh, those Athenians, they're awful, they're self-indulgent, they're a bunch of slime balls, right? And, uh, you know, so we have to, all these third world countries, they have to be there for us or they're against us and all that stuff, right? So I don't know, what do you think, Michael? You tend to idealize yourself and demonize the other? Right, I mean, so obviously when you were just talking about like, that has been historically, you know, we do see that quite often. 
So I guess, do you, I mean, do you think that there was a significant difference after 9-11? Well, yes, I, obviously there was a significant difference in alienating others after 9-11. I don't know. No, uh, that's right, Michael, though it did. It ramped up a lot. I mean, at any point in time, you have, they're the angels in us, right? A good leader can tap in, you know, the good side of people. And a bad leader will tap into the fears, right? And so if you notice the political, um, what, conventions, you know, one party will appeal to hope and one will appeal to fear. And, and fear, you know, oh, those people are too soft on crime and, you know, war. And on the other hand, those people are so uh, obsessed with power that they don't care about well-being, right? Um, so I think it's, I just think it's a very dynamic event, like it is with people. It's just that after 9-11, the, the downward spiral sort of kicked in right. and it's just hard to figure out. Black Lives Matter was one effort to head in the other direction. Um, yeah, it, I, I don't like to give a defin definitive, um, it's, it's tough and it's touchy and it's important. Right. So, there's a big difference between in terms of what they're trying to tap into between Trump and Biden, you know, might, you might agree with some of their policies or whatever, but spiritually, the way they try to appeal to people, right, their hearts or their emotions or whatever, they're different. They have different styles, whatever. Right. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, all right. So let's go to Islam on women, okay? We had a couple things. Um, so I, I mean, I'll tell you that I, I get annoyed by liberals when they get too idealistic and pie in the sky and then they get stubborn about it. I don't like that. <laughs> and I don't like conservatives when they get so pessimistic and cynical, and they get stubborn about it, that's annoying. <laughs> so you guys decide for yourselves. Um, all right, so here's the chapter from the Reigns book. Um, all right, so there was the thing about covering your body. Is it necessarily so bad? There's a reason for it. Um, the Quran and women can be interpreted as pro-feminist and it can be interpreted as sexist, right? Um, and then he just describes, here are the anti-feminist aspects of it. Here are the pro-feminist aspects. Um, the Quran defends the weak against the strong, which should, you know, women should have been considered the weaker, you know, so it would defend women and under that, sort of umbrella. Um, Muhammad's way of life, the example that he set. Then the Sharia law came after, right? Just exactly like Buddha. Buddhism came way after Buddha. It, it promoted the sexist culture. The code of Manu is very different from the spirit of Hinduism. Um, I think that Jesus was not sexist. And so everything that came before and after that is not really in the spirit of Jesus. Um, Socrates, actually his two teachers were women and he would have been considered sort of um, effeminate and emasculated because he was calm and gentle and quiet. Um, so the, again, the Sharia law came way after Muhammad. And he would have, okay, that's a, just a big problem. Um, but you can use the Quran to promote progressive treatment and um, pluralism. Um, and if you stay focused on God, you shouldn't, it shouldn't be as big a problem. It's when we focus on doctrine that we get into trouble. 
Um, all right, so let me try to, um, Lakesny, you've been number six and seven so far in my calling on people. Would you like to react first? Did you read um, Is my uh, Islam a woman? Yes. Yes, no, I had a couple. Okay. Uh, I had uh, I come in. I didn't. I didn't quote it from the book, but it was talking about uh, really how the men are uh, over the women, like men are dominant, and the women have to be submissive. And I was like, it's crazy how men could do anything, but the women are controlled not only by the men, but uh, but by law, their law and religion. Uh, Another topic that was crazy to me was that pregnant women, well, pregnant single women are labeled as adulterous. Or what? Adulterous. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, that's true that. in Christianity. That's true. All those ancient religions, you get in big trouble. Yeah. And, um. They have to raise the child alone and not even speak of the man that the child is of. That's and, true um, in all those religions. <laughs> and, um, the, do you pronounce the choir? The choir? I forgot. I don't know how to say it, but. Um, right. Yes, Mal. I mean, yeah, yeah, that one. The what? <laughs> Say it again, Mariana. The Quran. Oh, Quran, yeah. Yeah, it's the word of God. Yeah. It's, it's quoted on the uh, top, and it was like, it's the word of God, and God never speaks to women. And what I said about that was like, so man makes their own interpretation of what God says, because according to them, God only speaks to them. And because the guy speaks to them, they're going to already be over the women because, yeah. And that's all I have. Okay. Do you know, again, the students know the Bible better than I do. Do you know uh, a biblical reference where God talks straight to a woman? I can't think of it right off the top of my head. Uh, no, ma'am. So... Yeah, this isn't just a problem with Islam. <laughs> it's, a, it's a problem. Um, anyway, um, is that it, Lakesley? Do you have anything else? Yes, ma'am, that's it. Okay, Trey, you're another one that's gotten the short shrift here. Yeah, so kind of going with uh, uh, October said, um, so men really did like kind of control women's uh, uh, sexuality, like when having their sons and stuff like that, I guess they were like determining that and they were like making sure that that was their children. And it says um, there's the critique of Pruda and the, um, uh, there was another one, but it was just kind of crazy how they were talking about like rights, but it's just oh, wait, like- wait, everybody it's, has it's the other reading, it's the other one. There, we're going to get to that one, the Perda one, but it it's was not the Perda, the Perda and the human no, rights. No, not first. I mean, we're going to get to that next, but this one is the reading from the book, right? The Islam and Women book, and then we'll get to that that other one next. But this was the one, you know, the Justice Men Owe Women, Chapter Three. Okay. Then I, I'll come back to that one and I'll have something for you. So you don't have anything right now. Uh, I was just been reading. I had, that was the only one I read so far. The Perda one? Mm -hmm. Okay, that was just an outline, right? It wasn't an article. It wasn't, uh, you know, a chapter from a book. Right? Right. And then we're reading the, uh, the Houston Smith book, right? Yeah, except that this, okay. The things on Perda, that's a six page outline, right? And this is a three-page outline. So there wasn't any reading. 
right? I see. I see what you're talking about. Okay, so right now we're just talking about something I assigned you to read from a book, right? Okay, yeah. I assume you have the book and I wrote that, you know, there are three books required and all that stuff. Okay. Okay. So if you if you have more to say, Trey, just raise your hand, right? And and I'll just call on you. Um so right now we have okay, Titus, go ahead. Well, I was first going to share one of my points about, well, really, it's confusion on the hypocrisy of the Quran supposedly supporting the weak, but it seemed like their women are their least favorite thing. So I was honestly kind of confused about that. Like I wanted a further explanation of why that was, but another question I had was, I wonder why there hasn't been any I guess, protests or uprisings, because obviously I haven't been in an Islamic country, but if I were a betting man, I'd say not many women are agree with the way they're being treated, especially if once they catch wind of how much better they are compared to themselves in the United States. So I was wondering after all this time, why there hasn't been any type of protest or any type of people speaking out on that. And thirdly, it was just something that I overall disagreed with. I think it was a specific quote from the Quran that was in the book. And it said, basically, to those women or to the disobedient women, they wanted you, like they literally said, to beat them. And I really didn't like that, especially since they were just talking about how they were supposed to be on the side of the weak. So I don't know. That was just a couple of things I didn't really agree with. Yeah, and and you know the the chapter really gives both sides, right? And and it, also the Old Testament has some pretty brutal stuff about women. <laughs> and then Paul, you know, he has his thing. So <laughs> anyway, so just trying to be fair, but yeah, I mean, as a woman myself, these traditions, the cultures are so sexist and the religion gets co-opted, right? In every case and becomes really sexist. Um, all right, so let's go with Jason, go ahead. Um. Kind of just going off of like what Quincy and um, yeah, just uh, talking about how like the Quran was talking about um, like men having uh, dominion over women and stuff like that. But I think one thing I think that gets uh, misinterpreted a lot is um, how they have uh, their women covered in in all black and only the eye slit of showing. But um, I think. To me personally, I, I don't disagree with that. I, I don't at all. Um, I, I believe it's a tradition thing. It's uh, also as well where um, I think it's, um, they have it that way so that um, only your husband should be able to look at you um, without that. I think it's, uh, I could be wrong. Maybe you might know more than me. Um, I think it's where they have it to where that way. So when they're out in pl public, no one else looks at them and but when you know only their husband sees them without that um article of clothing on and i think that's a big thing because like um you know uh it mentions like sexual impulses and stuff like that and and how people look at people a certain way and lust and and, and whatnot but like i think that's big because like only i think to me personally on, on how they like they say only your husband should see you um that way i think that's I don't know, maybe it's just me and, you know, you might take this the wrong way, but um, I, I think that's a, I guess you could say a good thing. Maybe, I don't well, you know. You could just say it's understandable. Right, it's understandable because like, you know, you don't, um, you know, me personally, I, I wouldn't want anybody looking at, you know, um, my lady a certain way or, or, or looking at it and, and thinking certain thoughts and, you know, you guys might get on my back for this one, but I, you know, it's up for debate. Um, 
you know, I think I think that's a understandable, right? You shouldn't. Um, am I making sense, or am I just rambling? Well, I think you just say it's understandable and sort of leave it at that, right? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I mean, does that make sense to other people? To just say I can understand it. I don't really know, you know, what else to say than that. But it's intuitively, it makes sense. Right, because some, you know, um, uh, people interpret that as like um, controlling what uh, I, I know there's that side to it too <laughs> right yeah. and why is it a woman's fault why does she have anyway you right. can go on and on yes, um yes, I, michael i'm gonna go with caitlin i'm gonna i'm gonna get to you but i i have to you know try to get overall the order here go ahead caitlin i'm gonna talk about what jason was saying not about what i was going to talk about okay uh, I was going to say, like, I think, like, what he was trying to say was that it could maybe be a more um, intimate relationship with, uh, you know, I think he's a terrible old lady. We know that Jason doesn't have one of those, but, uh, um, but that uh, I think the other implications of it that, you know, he didn't mention and that you briefly mentioned were that it does, it goes back to that idea that, you know, uh, women should have to hide their bodies because of men. Um, and, and that like clearly is not okay. Um, so yeah, that's all I was going to, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, um, Caitlin, go ahead. Um, so basically, I mean, I feel like we kind of all like feel the same about these topics. I know I talked yesterday about how the men can have up to four wives, um, it also said in this reading today that their wives can be Jews or Christians. So I thought that was weird. Um, and then obviously how the females dress and they require strict, strict male supervision, confining them to the household. Um, it said men can have free sexual access to female slaves. Um, and then one of the quote, the quote that really stuck out to me, was, um, it's kind of a long quote, but it was basically like when a male, like when a child is born, if it's a female, then they are like ashamed and like inward grief and they will, it says, shall he retain her in contempt or bury her in the dust? And it was just like, I don't know. It just kind of blew my mind because yeah. I wouldn't think of having a, a girl. Right. Would, no, you know. that happens in China and India too. Yeah. Um, so that was the big quote that got me. Yeah. Femicide. Okay. Akaya, you're next. So let me bring. Okay. So I talked about, um, like, well, I brought up what Lucchesi brought up about, like, the men and how they decide who the adulterer is. And then I brought up, um, men, they can beat their disobedient wives, which I thought was crazy and then the daughters get half as much inheritance as the sons do it just makes me realize that in other countries women are literally treated like slaves and they have like no voice no say so I don't know it's just crazy to me how these women are being treated less or their value less than they should be okay you do need I mean the article really does take both sides though right there's a lot of stuff Early in the Mecca, men and women worshiped together. In the early period, they could interpret the religious law, right? So, um, so I, I do want to give you a sense that it's considering the culture, it was ahead of its time at the time, right? Is that I just want to be fair because Christianity has, has been pretty brutal towards women also. Uh, a lot of that is just the culture. It's not the religion. Um, but anyway, so we just have to keep moving. Um, Mary Hannah? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my first one, I'll try to make it quick because I know we're running out of time. Um, it was talking about how in our society, a young, tall, and thin woman is generally seen as desirable. However, thin women in North Africa or South Asia is not considered desirable because that means that's like a sign of po poverty. Um, I just think that's like body shaming and I obviously really I don't agree with that and I'm not gonna talk about it. But then I was gonna point out how I said on the other hand, 
Um, both genders occupied the same space at worship and women could interpret the law. Um, it's, but then it was an equality that was quickly lost in succeeding generations as women were not segregated in worship, but excluded from religious worship. So, I mean, they did have, um, I thought that was unique because then that kind of disappeared over the years. Same with the early church. Right. And after Constantine made it the official empire religion, <laughs> it changed. Right. Yeah, okay. Um, and then another, do you mean keep going or no? I can yeah, stop ahead. it here, Michael. Okay. Um, one more point, Mary Hannah, and then we'll go to Michael. Okay. And then I was just going to touch on the whole full body, body covering, but people have talked about that, so we can move on. Okay. Okay, Michael. Um, yeah, so I too was going to bring up the fact that like in the the, the the earlier, like the earlier day, it was, you did see kind of more equality. Uh, and I was going to ask you, because um, I didn't, I wasn't, uh, like through the reading, I was a little, uh, I got a little confused. Was it that like the Quran itself kind of brought about um, the more like a, the, the a more like a sort of patriarchy? Or was it that like the, to the, the culture in general moved, moved into that direction? The Quran was less patriarchal than... <laughs> And Muhammad was. It's just what came after Muhammad and the Sharia laws okay. and all that stuff. That became doctrinal. It became like, you know, Jesus had trouble with the Old Testament because it was so full of the Talmud and the Torah. It was so legalistic. So that's what happened to Islam, too. It became really legalistic. Um, and then when it becomes legalistic, it tends to become sexist because it just becomes part of the culture. It has to do with power and money. Um, so let's see, next time we can do the purda. We'll do purda. And then we'll go on to um, the next one is, yeah, terrorism. So I have just one, mainly one long article and then the rest of them are on outlines, but let me make sure. Terrorism and Aristotle. Um, yeah, that's a long reading, but that's it for the long reading, you know, considering it's a whole week's worth of homework. Um, and yeah, I, I hope you have reactions. Some Somebody just asked me, they wanted in Indonesia, they wanted to have this international conference and it was gonna be on terrorism. And I needed to give a talk. And I said, I don't know anything. You guys know more than I do. He said, well, we want it to be international. So you have to come and be one of the speakers. <laughs> so I kind of did Aristotle on terrorism. So you guys can figure this out. You should be able to have written that paper by now. Okay, it's not that hard. All right, um, I'll see you and take care. And I'm sorry that we couldn't get to more stuff because all of you have a lot to say. Um, all right. We'll see you. Bye-bye. Dr. Beck? Yes? Um, for us football players, I talked to my coach, and um, we will we'll still be able to make the regular class time. So um, I don't think we'll be missing anything as far as... Um, the trouble is all the homework, right? Right. Yes, ma'am. But um, I think as far as, like, making class and... Um, yeah, just making class time, we'll still be able to, uh, to attend regular class time. It's just, uh, it'll be a little bit more crunch time now, um, more than ever now that we're... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I worry about you getting all the work done. And then I just, I don't see how you can do it by the deadline, right? Uh, the um, deadline you said is the fourth, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, when uh the, for like the assignment submissions um you said post we're posting it on google meet uh, Classroom? Or, uh, google, google Classroom. Classroom. right under the um the part where it says uh, uh paper one dude right yeah okay so uh for the post are they are there different um assignment dues or are they all under the same one where we can submit it okay so um here each post, right? So there's nine posts. Yes, ma'am. And it tells you, you know, what the date okay. for each one are. And then, does that make sense? It says uh, July 20th night, due Friday the 30th, 800 words total, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I think, I think 
finally. I mean, it usually takes me a while to get all the details straight. Okay. Um, usually a student has to say, now how many words was that? Or where did you remember to post that? I mean, I'm not good at details. So um, anyway, I think I've got them all by now. Um, and, you know, you can, you can try to tough it out or you can try to get an incomplete. Like either one is okay with me. You do have to buy the books and read the books. That's yes, um, another question. Um, for what I was gonna say, uh, I think it had to do with. I forgot what I was gonna say. It had to do something with the posts. Um, I, I do have a question about the posts. So when we we're doing the posts, like as we're doing them, you um, do you really care how we like structure it? Like, do you want like a start, middle, and end? Because like I just kind of. It was actually supposed to be the three reactions before class and then three responses to students during the class and then your takeaway. But now that it's so late, you could do, you could just do one 800 word post about what your takeaway is, right? Um, and it's more important to me that you read, I mean, I. It, I don't, you've been to most of the classes, you probably watched most of the pre-class videos, but if you haven't done the post, it might be hard for you to remember what people said, right? Does that make sense? And, and you don't have to go back over those again, just to find some, what another student said, so you can write a reaction, right? If you'd rather just write all your own ideas about that reading, that's fine. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Sir. Yeah, you don't have to redo stuff. That's the problem. You get behind, you end up doing even more work because you write. It's right. That's but, not good. I don't want you to have to do that. But you do want us to turn in um, the posts and the, the papers too, right? Yep, so nine posts. And also, I would like all of your posts to be 800 words because they're so late. Um, but you should be, it shouldn't be that hard because you can write a post for the first day that includes something we've done since then, right? The more you weave the class together, the better, so. Okay, okay. so can that apply for our papers as well too? Like, because um, I'm be honest. You just, can't, you just can't keep repeating yourself. Right, right, right. Because right, right. I'm beyond, I've been writing my second paper a little during class but I can weave in some of the stuff we've been talking about today. And okay. Yep. okay. As long as you keep weaving new stuff. Sure. Yes, Cause the final paper is supposed to be, yeah, just keep building like that. And that's good. And then, and then when is the, the final paper due? The fourth or what is, what, let me see. The last day of class is when? on Wednesday, the fourth and the papers do the fifth. My grades are due the sixth. It, again, you don't have to try to tough it out, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And um, I think your grade would be better probably if you didn't, but sure. it really is up to you. And you know, it's your choice and I'm not gonna mandate anything. I did write to the provost to try and speak up for you. Um, because I'm very aware, I'm like, I'm aware of the shrinking middle class and I'm aware that it's harder to pull yourself up. And I don't, I know you guys aren't complainers and there's no point in complaining, but I'm not gonna act as if I don't know that some people have more advantages than others. It's just that we can't do anything about it except that I'll do what I can do about it, right? And we can move forward. Does that make sense? I don't want you to, I like your attitude. I like your positive attitude, but it's in the context of, you know, reality. Um, and that's why number one is that you don't, I'm not thinking any bad thoughts about you because you couldn't get it all done by the deadline. Do you understand? Yes, not yes. a bit. That, that's really important to me that you know that. Blaming the victim is, so easy. Uh, it's so easy to forget your privilege, your position of privilege. 
Um, but I, at one point I had a baby in the ghetto of Philadelphia and I, and they didn't provide housing and I got kicked out because I didn't go fast enough. Okay. So I know a little bit about that. Just a little bit about that. Okay. We'll see you. Take care guys. I've enjoyed listening to you and all that. It's fun. And then uh, my mom, apparently she wants to meet you. Oh, <laughs> does he want this on the recording? <laughs> Hello, how are you? You have a wonderful son. I've learned a lot listening in. I appreciate you. Oh, well, I just, uh, I think your son's a great guy. Oh, well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. Have a good evening. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Professor Beck. Sure, bye-bye.